Hello, my name is Mohan Kjalkar, and I want to discuss Norway's energy nirvana in this video. If you listen to any climate change activist, or if you read an article written by a climate change activist, they will invariably discuss how Norway as a model country has fought the climate change and how all the other countries should follow Norway's example. Norway, a very small country of about 5.5 million people, has a median income of $82,000, and it's one of the richest countries in the world. A few years ago, there was a Super Bowl commercial where Will Farrell talked about how Norway is beating United States in EV cells, electric vehicle cells, and how we should go there and beat Norway in their own game. It was funny and also realistic because if you look at the number of cars sold in Norway, the number of electric vehicles sold reached about 83% in 2023. Compared to 2005, there was hardly any sale of electric vehicle. This kind of dramatic change happened because of the concessions which are provided by Norway to people to buy electric vehicles. According to Norway's prime minister, EVs have become a status symbol. And part of the reason it has become a status symbol is because there is no value added tax on electric vehicles in Norway. There is no additional tax related to the weight and CO2 emission of a vehicle. There are lower tolls and parking fees if you drive electric vehicle. And there's a preferred travel in bus lanes. And also the government provides low interest loans if you purchase electric vehicles. Essentially, Norwegian people are asked to purchase electric vehicles because government provides so many incentives to purchase those cars. Norway is also endowed with significant hydroelectric energy. There are about 1,700 hydroelectric dams, about 1,000 water reservoirs. It generates about 70% excess electric, uh, electricity compared to what is needed, and it exports significant amount of electricity to other countries. According to this charge, 90% of the electricity which is generated in Norway comes from renewable resources, which is mostly hydroelectric energy. This is significantly higher than any other country. So with 100% renewable electricity, approximately 200 grams of CO2 per kilometer emission is avoided. And this is equivalent to about 40 tons of CO2 over five years life of electric vehicle. And Norwegian government on an average provides about $40,000 benefit over a five-year period. So if you purchase electric vehicle, you'll save about $40,000 compared to gasoline-powered vehicle. So if you divide 40,000 by 40 tons, the government is paying roughly $1,000 for every ton of CO2 which is not emitted by driving an electric vehicle. This is significantly greater than the current trading cost of CO2 in European market, and it costs a lot of money for Norwegian government. Not many governments can afford to pay $1,000 for every ton of CO2 not emitted. But fortunately for Norway, Norway also is endowed with significant hydrocarbon resources, and it sales significant of hydrocarbons to other parts of the world. Approximately 1,400 million barrels of equivalent hydrocarbons are sold by Norway. And this has resulted in significant savings. Norway's sovereign wealth fund is worth $1.3 trillion, which is equivalent to about $230,000 per Norwegian citizen. Not many countries have this kind of saving compared to Norway. Now, you would think that by using this sovereign wealth fund and providing these incentives for electric vehicles, 
Norwegians would significantly reduce their fossil fuel consumption because this is what the hope is in many other countries that if you drive electric vehicles, we will significantly reduce our fossil fuel consumption. Unfortunately for Norway, with increasing wealth and higher GDP, Norwegian citizen also wants to use more energy. If you compare Norway GDP with the two neighboring countries, Sweden and Denmark, up to 1990, the numbers were very similar. But then Norway started producing a lot of hydrocarbons and its GDP increased significantly. And today it's about 20% greater than Sweden and Denmark. And that means they, if they save money by buying electric vehicles, they will use that money to consume other forms of energy. And it is indeed true that the amount of fossil fuel consumed by Norway has not significantly reduced over the last 25 years. So even starting 2000, Norway provided significant incentives to buy electric vehicles. Their fossil fuel consumption has remained stubbornly constant over the last 25 years. If you compare Norway's fossil fuel consumption with the rest of the European countries, which don't buy as many electric vehicles, you will see that the numbers are comparable. Further, Norway actually consumes almost 65% of more energy than the average world citizen. The problem looks even worse when you look at the scope three emissions from Norway's hydrocarbon production. Norway has approximately half a million EV cars driving on the road. And assuming each car drives about 10,000 kilometers per year with 200 grams of CO2 per kilometer avoidance, the total amount of CO2 which is not emitted by providing these incentives for EV cars is about 1 million tons. But Norway also sells 1,400 million barrels equivalent hydrocarbons per year, which amounts to about 0.45 tons of CO2 for every barrel. So if you calculate the total amount of CO2 which is emitted by the hydrocarbon sold by Norway, it's about 630 million tons. So when you take the ratio of the CO2 which is emitted by Norwegian hydrocarbons to the amount of CO2 which is avoided by using these significant incentives, that ratio is about 630. Considering that CO2 emission is a global problem, by reducing the amount of CO2 emission by using the electric vehicles doesn't really significantly change the total amount of CO2 which is emitted. And this is partly because of the fact that Norway continues to sell the hydrocarbons to the rest of the world. Thank you for listening to the presentation. If you like what I presented, please subscribe to my channel.